بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد محمد All praises and thanks due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the creator, the sustainer and the provider of the universe Tonight, as many millions and millions of people across our country get ready to celebrate the so-called Thanksgiving holiday I wanted to reflect and share some thoughts with everyone who's been involved with Ilya over the years First of all, we want to thank all our donors for the support that they have provided us, especially during the last six months during the COVID pandemic, where things have been extremely, extremely difficult for the youth of our communities across many, many states. And the support we have been receiving from everyone has been overwhelmingly important and, and very touching and alhamdulillah has made a profound, profound impact on the lives of uh, these young people. But there's always two sides of a story. And as I grew up in this country, in my elementary years, I was told the story that there was a group of immigrants who crossed the ocean and settled into this new difficult land. And they were braving the pearls of the new world. And as they were embarking on this transformative experience, they met the natives. And these natives taught them how to harvest certain things and how to survive the harsh winters in the wide plains of this large, vast continent. That's the story I was told. And in return, they thanked these natives and made a holiday out of it. But the reality is the other side of the story, which is that Thanksgiving to Native Americans is nothing more than a dark reminder of an ugly history, of genocide of millions of Native Americans. See, before the uh, presence of the white man into this continent, there were people living in this continent studies say probably between 20 to 40 million people spread across the entire continent, living in tribes. And we see and hear their names all over in Delaware and in Maryland and New York and, and Arizona, they're all across. They're, they're, they're uh, the names of these native tribes. So for them, it's nothing more than a racist, abusive, genocidal memory. It is the Palestine of today, 400 years ago. It is the Kashmir of today. It is the Burma of today. It is the Western China of today. And for us, 400 years later to be celebrating a holiday that mostly all of us have been misinformed about is a huge disrespect to our intellect and to our values as human beings and our values as Americans who stand up for liberty and truth and justice for all. So on this day as Americans, and specifically American Muslims, we want to make sure we share the message of Islam, the message of justice and uniformity and, and equality amongst the human race. And that no one is superior over anyone except based on the deeds they do for the only one who is to be thanked for the countless blessings that were given God, God Almighty, or as we call him in Arabic, Allah, Subhana wa ta'ala. Glory be to him and all praises to him. For Muslims thanking God is just a natural everyday occurrence. It's not something we need to do once a year or once a week or once a day. It's a matter of fact, every second. Whenever we remember God, we're thanking God. But as a bare, bare, bare minimum, 
The backbone of a Muslim is the prayer. And we pray at least five times a day, five mandatory prayers. And in those five prayers, we do 17 rakahs in each rakah. We recite Al-Fatiha and we start by saying Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. All praises and thanks are due to the Lord of the universe. So at bare minimum, a Muslim who just does the bare minimum of an Islamic practice recognizes and thanks God at least 17 times a day. There is nothing on this planet that's recited more frequently and by more people than the opening of the Quran, those seven verses. They're recited 17 times a day by every practicing Muslim. That's besides many people who practice more than that and they pray more than that. Or they might not be praying in a particular moment of the day or the night. They're just sitting back and reflecting on their day or their hour before and they say, Alhamdulillah. As a matter of fact, whenever two Muslims meet each other, they say, how are you doing, buddy? The first thing that comes out of their mouth is Alhamdulillah, which is thanking God. So an average Muslim who's just cognizant of his faith or her faith, not necessarily even practicing, probably thanks God somewhere about a hundred times a day. Wow. That's a core part of our faith. That's why in Islam, you can't separate religion from everyday life. It's part of who you are. You are a Muslim on the 25th or the 26th of November. You're a Muslim on Friday. You're a Muslim on Monday. You're a Muslim on Tuesday, on Wednesday, on Thursday, on Friday, on Saturday, and Sunday. You're a Muslim early in the morning when you get up to pray. You're a Muslim late at night. You're a Muslim in the middle of the afternoon. You're the, a Muslim right before sunset. You're a Muslim at the beginning of nighttime. So we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he is the only one worthy of being praised and thanked throughout the day and the night. He's praised for difficulty and ease, because we know that the difficulty that God puts upon us is a test. But as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, our dear beloved Prophet, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, has taught us, whoever does not thank the people, is not thankful to God. So thanking each other is also natural for a Muslim. So I wanna thank you for your support again, for what you have been doing to support our youth, especially in these difficult times. I wanna thank our youth who are working very hard day and night to make their lives and the lives of their peers more powerful, more impactful, more meaningful, more purposeful. You would hear from some of our youth, they would say, before joining Ilya, I really didn't have a clear plan of my life. I was 17, I was just going to school, coming back, doing my homework. I really never thought about life. But after I joined Ilya, I had a much better, clear, precise, accurate picture of what I want to do in my life. I became more excited getting up early in the morning. And alhamdulillah, we have today close to 20 young people who get up every single morning after Fajr and they get together on a conference call to plan their day and their week and to visualize and to dream about great things for this beautiful ummah. Alhamdulillah, we're so excited about our youth. Our youth are energetic, they're motivated, they are risk-taking, they're doing great things and we continue to need your support. But our ultimate praises and thanks go to Allah. And it's not lip service. It's not getting around a table to eat a certain meal to declare our thanks and appreciation. But a Muslim thanks Allah through mainly two ways. Recognizing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by Allah's actions. Recognizing that Allah is the provider, that he gives us the knowledge, he gives us the wealth, he gives us the health, he gives us the family, the companionship, he gives us the ease. He is the Lord, he provides. So we recognize God by his actions, and that is what we call the oneness of God, oneness of Allah by his actions. And also a Muslim thanks God by believing in him through our actions. So it's not only a lip service because Satan understands God very well. 
Satan recognizes that God has the upper hand because Satan even swears by God's power. He says in the Quran, by your power, by your might, I shall take them all astray with me, referring to the men, the human race. So shaitan, Satan recognizes God's attributes, but here's the difference. As Muslims, we recognize God and we thank God by our actions, by our acts of worship, by our acts of fasting, by our act, acts of doing good deeds and submitting to God. And this is what we call the tawheed, the oneness of God, of ibadah, of worship. And when we put the two together, tawheed al-rububiyya and tawheed al-ibadah, the oneness of God based on his actions and the oneness of God's based on our actions, we start to become a believer. And the third perspective is believing in God in, through his attributes, his, the all-compassionate, the almighty, the all-powerful, the all-forgiving, uh, uh, the all-loving, the all-hearing, the all-knowing, the all-seeing, by believing in God's attributes, only then a person can humiliate themselves and spread the love with the rest of humanity, not necessarily because we love each other or we're buddies or friends, but because this is what God commanded us to do. And because we love God, we will love each other. And we will become true buddies. This is the spirit of Islam. This is the spirit of thanking. And this is the spirit of giving to share the message. I leave you in peace, just like our beloved prophet taught us. And I humbly ask you to share the message. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be upon you.